Hello. Um, so I'm Jake from the International Music Managers Forum. We're a network of artists and artist representatives in about 25 countries around the world. And we basically, we're a forum, so we discuss what's happening for artists and their business model, musical artists, mainly commercial music, uh, rock, pop, hip-hop, urban, stuff like that. Um, so we're at a really interesting time. Um, I'm really excited myself by 2014. It feels like for a number of years we've had, within our forum, we've had a number of discussions. Where's this going? What's the end game for music? What's the new forms of distribution? How will consumers experience music? And it feels like a really great year, 2014, we're here. So we've got a phenomenal year for Spotify, who's got like 50 million subscribers last year, early last year, so like 18 months ago. They were at about half of that. We've got uh, iTunes buying Beats, the streaming service. We've got all sorts of stories about YouTube coming with the new streaming music service. And it feels for a number of reasons that 2014 is the year that the future arrived and we can stop discussing what's it going to be like. We can actually get on with fixing and tweaking things and making stuff better for musicians. Our job, artist managers, is to support the artist in having a business model so that they can go and create, so that they have an income, so that they can make music. Um, a thing that we're increasingly seeing is that the music industry is one thing and musicians are another. The music industry has agendas, has goals, has policy uh, specifics that it seeks that aren't always aimed at uh, encouraging and developing new musicians. They're often aimed at supporting the music industry. Um, this has been a really interesting year. Taylor Swift, the American artist, has just had a huge album just been released in the States that is of a scale comparable to what Michael Jackson used to do with his album. So it's way smaller in terms of number of units sold because the market has declined, because of digital, because of disruption. But relative to the rest of the market, she's outperforming everything in a way that we haven't seen since artists like the Beatles and Michael Jackson did that. And she's done a really interesting thing. She's blocked all her music from Spotify. So we've suddenly started having all these people saying, whoa, she proves Taylor Swift is the exception that proves the rule that you don't need streaming and that a lot of these di new digital services are bad for artists. Um, and actually, she's, she's the exception that proves the rule. She's a fantastic social networker. She's put a lot of effort into building her fan base and her fans because of the age of them, because of the audience, because of various factors, because of the development work that she's done with them over a number of years want a piece of her, they want her CD, they want to own stuff, they want the photographs that it comes with, they want a, um, an archival item that connects them to this wonderful album that she's released. So looking at the extreme high sales that she's got and correlating that as a reason for all artists not to use Spotify is kind of like wrong because there's a lot of artists, for example, in dance who are just releasing digital singles who don't build that relationship up with the community, with the fans that she's done. So it's a really exciting time. And what we're seeing, if we take Taylor Swift as one model and some sort of grunge artist that none of us have ever heard of who's just putting stuff up on SoundCloud and streaming it as another model, we've got a range of models. So the artists are free to pick what they want to do and it should be relevant mainly to their audience, mainly to their customer base. They don't have to follow one business model that the industry is based on. Um, and that kind of brings us to a problem in that a lot of people are discussing what's wrong with the music industry, what do we need to fix? And it's like we're here. Streaming music has arrived in 2014. It's been around for longer than that. But we're getting large scale adoption of it. And we're getting big investment in it. The numbers, the income from streaming is outstripping downloading. Downloading is kind of like an ephemeral transient state between physical, aped physical, owning, having a tethered download, a track on your iPod that you couldn't do a lot with, was very much an analogy of owning a CD or a piece of vinyl, where streaming is a much more freer experience and you have access to all of catalogue. So we're at a point where it's very difficult for uh, emerging artists to be seen, to be heard, because we, the consumers, have access to all of music. So we can get on our phones through our streaming services, okay, not all of everything, but pretty much 90 to 100% of what we would look for. 
and we're inundated and we have back catalogue. So if a current artist, 2014 artist, is talking about their influences and they direct you back to artists like the Velvet Underground or Kraftwerk, you're going to investigate those catalogue artists. When the physical model was the dominant uh, model for the music industry, you wouldn't necessarily go out and buy a Kraftwerk album or buy a Velvet Underground album just because an artist had mentioned there was an influence. It was quite an expensive investment for you. Maybe four or five times a year you would buy a new album at full price and maybe you would collect second-hand albums through the rest of the year. Your access to new music wasn't that great. You could hear it on the radio, but you had to really fall in love with it and being compelled to buy it because it was a real investment. Whereas now when you're paying, if you're using a streaming service on a monthly basis, you just go and click and check out the Velvet Underground. So new artists, although we've got all this money coming into streaming, and we've got a migration of the spend from consumers onto digital platforms, what's happening is that money's being spread across a bunch of artists. It's engaging catalogue, which returns us to the, the music industry. So a lot of the record companies, their incomes are heavily invested in catalogue, exploitation of deep catalogue, of having volume. They don't make money necessarily through individual artists. Taylor Swift's really unusual, the scale that she's doing for a current artist. They're making money across the width of the catalogue. So for an individual artist, for a musician, if we're trying to fund musicians to create new music, to bring new ideas, to bring voices of their generation to be relevant, currently in the 2014 ecosystem, they're going to have a smaller share of the total money that's spent on music so as well as hearing sort of strange debates about should you be on Spotify, should you not, answer equals what does your audience want, what does the artist want, not there's a rule. Um, we also have the conversation about where's the money going, is the money going up? And everyone's obsessed with the headline number and the money is going up and it will keep going up because more and more people will engage with streaming services, will have better services um, and will just reach more people it'll become wider, but that's not necessarily a solution. We shouldn't necessarily be optimistic about that as a route for funding new artists um, because the money is simply spread across the catalogue artists in a way that it didn't used to be. It used to be mainly spent on people purchasing new CDs. Um, a thing that then comes that flows from that is as we have a greater focus on the width and spread of music, and it's harder for individual artists to raise investment. We're seeing small artists, the first rung on the ladder, as it were, they can support themselves. They have a job, they have friends and family, they live at home, they're a student, they form a band in a garage, they're messing around on their computer, they're releasing tracks on SoundCloud. That bottom rung of discovery of new artist development is kind of viable and sustainable and always has been. Artists like the Beatles, when they were starting out, they didn't see themselves as potentially having a massive career. They went to Hamburg to play money for, to play gigs for money and have fun, meet girls, drink beer. It was great. They were doing it for a few years. I don't think they projected the industry that they would create for themselves. So that bottom rung is fine. The top rung is fine. Taylor Swift's doing a phenomenal business this year. She's working with American um, supermarket Target. She's also working with brands like Pepsi. So she's, she's monetized to a high level. She's possibly more efficiently monetized than historical artists like Elvis and Madonna have been because she's using online, because she's engaged. So we're at a point where the, the elite artists are doing rather well, thank you. And... The bottom rung is fine. It always has been. People just need to create. They'll, they'll get involved in it. But we're missing money in the middle. And what we need to do is we need to reform the transparency, the systems of copyright, the systems of remuneration, so that when the new artist starts to get their music out there and starts to be heard, they can actually start to get some revenues. We've heard previously from some speakers today about the small amounts that come through collection societies. And this is often an issue of, of transparency. It's an issue of reliability. We're not going to find new investors in new artists. The old companies are not going to invest in new artists because most of their money is coming from catalogue. We need to get new investors into music. And the way we're going to do that is by supplying data and information 
to them to show them how it's scalable. And currently, we don't have the systems. The two problems are the intermediaries. The services have the information on the users. The, the artists don't, re don't receive that. And the other problem is the performing rights organisations and copyright in general. We don't have databases. We can't track artists. We can't pay them fairly. So we need to reform the middle. We don't need to change the business model. We don't need to look at where it's going. We're here now, but we need to reform that whole middle section of how information and money flows from the user to the artist. Thank you.